So if you've worked with Rails long enough, you're going to find you need to normalize data in some fashion at some point. And this video is a very quick guide to show you a cool little helper method that comes with Rails these days called normalizes. We add it to the specific model of your choosing. And on the fly, you can run these normalization callbacks, which are essentially like Lambda functions that occur on each of the column of your choice. Uh, so let's get started. I'm going to go straight into this one, not really show a demo because it's quite simple, but I'm going to call it normalize demo. And I'm going to pass tailwind and ES build for the new instance of the app. I'm going to go ahead and use the Tailwind CSS gem, which I'm going to add after this part. All right, I'm going to CD into that normalize demo, and I'm going to install the gem version of Tailwind. So I'll say bundle add Tailwind CSS Rails. We'll go ahead and install it. So we'll say Rails Tailwind CSS install. And you're going to have a conflict to say yes here if you're following along. Great. Okay. So with that in place, we can go ahead and generate a, a resource for this specific demo. I'm going to use a site basic model. That's going to have like a domain attribute or a column and a name column that to me is a good example to showcase some different things you can do with normalization on the fly. So we'll say rails, I'm going to clear this out real quick. Rails generate scaffold site and we'll have it have a title, which will be a string. A domain is a string as well. And then I'm going to just put something realistic like published uh, Boolean. Won't really use that one for normalization sake, but I just wanted to put it there just in case it gives you more context. So we'll run that and then I will migrate. If I'm moving quickly, I recommend checking out some of my other videos, though kind of back to the basics, but this is more or less demoing a feature, but I want to show you how I got to where I got. Uh, so I'm doing all this little bit of configuration up front. So I'm going to open up this in VS Code. And on my routes, one thing I want to do is just create root route. So I'll go to routes.rb. And in our root, I'm going to pass sites.index. And personally, can't stand all these comments, so I'm going to get rid of those. All right, save that down. We can boot our app now. Bin dev is what I'm going to run. You, if you're using vanilla Rails, nothing like Tailwind or anything like that, you can probably just run Rails server and be fine. Here, we'll go to localhost. All right, so now we have plain scaffolded sites using the Tailwind CSS gem. So you see some of this dummy UI is already pre-styled, save, save some time. Also recommend using Rails UI, which I'll probably start doing in my videos. You'll see me use it more as more features come to it. Still working on that behind the scenes, but that's a story from another time. All right, let's add a new site. And at this point, if I add a title of my site, maybe I want that to be a certain format. Um, maybe I don't want everything capitalized. Maybe I do want every word capitalized, et cetera. Um, the domain, there's a, several things you could do with a domain in this specific example. For what I'm gonna focus on mostly is just the formatting of the text, but you might wanna add some validations in the, in the scope of things too, to make sure the domain is unique, to make sure it's, um, doesn't have like any TLDs in the name, like .coms or anything like that. If that gets added, you want to definitely escape those or remove those from the string itself. That can all be done behind the scenes. I'm not going to go to, into that much depth since that's not the focus of this video. We're going to use the normalizes method in this specific case, but I wanted to just mention that this isn't a foolproof approach right now. So say the domains maybe like um, Andy, we'll just say title of my site and it, it just looks you know same as the title and what if the domain you can't have a domain with spaces for first of all so that doesn't work but if at this point we can save it and it's going to create it simply because it's a string and that's what it's designed to do at this point but what we could do to, to normalize this and make sure if it's a user generated piece of content in this case maybe they're adding their own site you can add this new normalizes method I don't know that it's new, but it is a method we can use. And for this first one, I'll use title and you'll actually pass a Lambda function using this with property. And we'll do the arrow, pass the title through, and then you can loop through that and perform some sort of formatting on it. So you can have access to all the string manipulation, um, 
methods that come with Rails or Ruby. And in this case, you could do a lot more with it even if you need to. I'm going to go pretty simple just to show you by context. So we can pass the title back through. I'm going to strip all the white spaces because there might be new lines that you don't see. Uh, you don't want those that, to make it to the database, essentially. And then I'm going to use Titleize, which is a built-in Rails string method helper. Uh, essentially makes every word of the string titleized, so titled. So it's capitalized. So we can try that out now. If I go back and even just edit this now and go back, maybe make that one lowercase, update it. We're going to get an error because I can't spell, so I'm going to remove that E. Go back again and redo what I just did. Make that lowercase just for fun. If we update it, look how it changed. So now even if we edit it uh, or create, it will go ahead and manipulate it with this normalize this function. So you can see how handy that can be when you're doing certain things that you want to be formatted a certain way. Now going a step further with domains, you could do the same trick. So you could say domain with domain. And you can chain these things, of course. So we could say domain strip. And what will we do there? Maybe we'll do down case strip and then parameterize to ensure it's going to have no spaces. It's going to be treated as a, it'll have like the kebab case if you're familiar. So basically like my domain name, something like that. If you enter something that is of this style. So even if I just go edit and then update, it should go ahead and format it on the fly for us. Uh, if I'll go add a new one just for fun, we'll say um, some funny title. Maybe we'll make it all lowercase there. And then the domain name will have my funny um, title. You can enter like bunch of white space period all those things Let's see if what it does it goes ahead and for formats it just like that and you're basically off to the races so with these two little quick methods in your model you can very quickly go through and not have to do anything in your controllers it all just kind of gets scoped to your models another thing you could do and you might need to do on the fly in like say a background job or something uh, is maybe find your i'll go into the rails console show you by example we'll say site equals site dot first call the normalize attribute method on this so site dot normalize attribute and you can call multiple there if you if you noticed uh, but i'm going to use one with the singular and then we will pass just the title symbol through and that will essentially go look in the model for that normalizes method and call this on it i'm going to set the title to my title and then site dot normalize attribute there it goes now it's back to title case which is good and then we can say site dot save there we go so let's do the same for domain maybe so site dot find one you could just say first as the same so there it is. Uh, let's set the domain to something wonky, maybe. So um, new domain name, and then site.update or normalize attributes. There it goes. And then you can say site.save. So pretty nifty, right? So that you might find yourself calling in maybe a background job or some sort of thing where you're not actually in the scope of the model. It gives you quick and easy access to those methods and is quick and easy to update on the fly should you need to. So hopefully that was helpful. I wanted to make this really quick to show you this feature. I find it very useful personally, and I'm going to be using it a lot more as we create apps that are more or less user generated content. So something that where someone enters a comment, maybe the title or their email or something in the app, you can quickly go through and normalize it, make it easier, easier on yourself and make your apps data more consistent.